this is Jody from Jody's Gems Quilting, and I'm really excited that you're joining me today. We are going to, I'm going to show you how I do use a thimble, a different type of a thimble for hand quilting. I met this lady back in, oh my gosh, almost 15, 17 years ago in Phoenix, Arizona at a quilt show, and she was hand quilting with this thimble, and I was like, huh, that's interesting. My mom's a master quilter, hand quilter with all of her friends in Iowa, and uh it was like, oh, but I just never got it. You know, I did do it, you know, the way you're supposed to traditionally, but it was just not for me. So I did learn how to do this with Jean Adkins from the House of Quilting. She's still around today. She's been trying to retire, but it really works so well for me. There's no hand cramping. It just made sense. You just lightly hold it and you just twist. You just twist your hand up and down back and forth, and this pushes it through for you, so you're no pressure on your fingers. If by chance you do end up with, you know, over time with some hand issues, arm issues, there is a therapy that I learned from one of my girlfriends in Phoenix who worked at a hospital, and they, she shared it with me, and she said it just takes rubber bands. Everybody has rubber bands, and it's a rubber band that's about this long. So you wrap it around your finger. She puts it around her wrist so she wears them all day and at stoplights or wherever you're sitting and waiting. You can take them out and you just put it around your finger and your thumb and you open your finger and thumb and then you go to the next finger and you just do hand exercises. And it really helps. If I ever start having hand issues, I just do it to both hands. And it's a great reminder to strengthen and uh, do some therapy. So anyway, you can always check with your physical therapist or your doctor to confirm that, but uh, it works for me. So anyway, before I get started and show you that, I'm going to show you a couple other things. There is a video that I produced on tools for hand sewing, and it's, it's a great video. I got everything in there, and I'll show you some of those things in a minute just to show you what, what's on there. And one of the things that Jean talked about and when she when I started with her now Bowen needles are my favorite today but back then she recommended colonial and you want always a size 10 quilting betweens they're really really short and they always say that the shorter the needle the shorter the stitch and I can verify that is absolutely true so I do recommend that. My I've never been a small stitch person, but that has helped me tremendously. She also recommends a finger saver, and she sells these. They're in it's like a double stick tape behind a piece of plastic, basically. It's a heavy duty plastic, but you just cut them and then you put it on your under finger, which I will show you. And I don't always use it, but when I've been quilting too long and my finger gets really sore then I stick one on there and you're going to prick it just like you would your finger and you can feel it and hear it pop. So it's a great, great little tool. There is also just to let you know that a lot of people um, baste by thread. They do thread basting when they're hand quilting. I do not. Um, I used to try it and it was like I always got snagged up on the threads and it just drove me crazy. So I still do traditional basting with pins and I do one inch pins just the small ones I don't do the big needles okay they're the big pins because I put huge holes in your quilts so try that and um, it should work really well for you I keep them opened in a pencil case along with my quick clip which is essential when you're uh, quilting and you're basting a uh, quilt I also use my pen marking tools I have those in here my favorites the clover the white clover marking pen and I do use frictions, and I have had the lines disappear on me, and I've had to try and get them back, and it didn't work in the freezer, so I can't say that they always come back when it gets cold. If they do, you just heat them. Just put an iron on there, and they go away. You need your tape for uh, laying out your backing and everything, and ta um, to put that down to the table. So anyway, I just have everything in one place, and it's really handy to keep it available. I also have an extra pair of glasses in every case and every project. Aren't they cute? Uh, it's fun to buy readers. Oh my gosh, I've been blind my whole life, but this gives me a chance to do some fun things. So I have to wear readers. My eye doctor told me I would probably have them forever. And so I use them for distance to the computer so I can see everybody on Zoom on those little boxes. 
and I also use them when I'm doing up close work, you know, hand work and things like that. And it just like magnifies. So if you need an extra pair, don't think anything of it. You might just go find the right strength. And it's very little, very little strength, especially between prescriptions. You need it. My favorite batting is the Quilters Dream Cotton. And it's only found at quilt stores. And you can quilt up to every eight inches apart. So I don't, I usually typically quilt more, but I don't use polyester and I cannot quilt through Warm and Natural. I've tried Warm and Natural, Warm and White. They all have too much scrim for me to use them. I do buy a big one and then I just cut into it. I just cut pieces out of it for whatever size I'm working on and it works well. I don't do a lot of huge quilts because it would take me forever. And my life is too full to have to worry about it. So just an idea. That's my favorite. Recently, when I taught this last time, the hand quilting, I did try Soft and Crafty, which I picked up at a big box store because it's really inexpensive and I use it in charity quilts. So I did try the Soft and Crafty and it did quilt really well too. So keep that in mind. You can try both. If you have a piece of it, just give it a try. There is also another tip I have for you is to buy cheater panels. This one, I bought at an auction in Phoenix years and years and years ago um, when I worked on it. I worked on it with a lady. They had a quilt auction every year, and the ladies, they were master quilters. Oh, my gosh. But if you were a beginner, you worked on a little project like this. And I really like it because when you do, um, you can just practice outlining. You just practice outlining. You don't have to draw anything. You don't have to come up with a design. And no one sees your stitches, really. So it works really good. What is quilting for? Whether you do it by machine or by hand, what is the object of quilting? Sometimes to enhance the design of the quilt, that's true. But typically, it's to hold the three layers together, right? So you just have to quilt it in knots. Some people do big stitches. They call it big stitch hand quilting. Some of us do small stitch or a traditional um, way to do it. So you figure out what works best for you and then work on that. One of the favorite things that I have that I love to do is English paper piecing. And I also have videos on that. And this goes with one of my new patterns. So there you go. My patterns look like this. Jody's jumps. And so this one features hand quilting in it. So this video has been <laughs> needing to be done for quite a while. But this allows you to do English paper piecing. You can do embroidery, the hand quilting. A lot of hand work. So it's great for travel. And my favorite is I designed this to go over. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. It goes over an easel. So you can get these easels. They're 8 by 10, 8 and a half by 11, like for um, presentation. You know, when there's um, doing people are doing presentations. And you just put a rod pocket or put a pocket on. Sometimes I do a rod pocket too. Put this pocket on and then it can slip right over it. So that was designed in mind to go over an easel. And that way, I love it because I have several of these and I put different miniature quilts up there. Some are Christmas, winter scenes. I've just got all different kinds of things. And it's a great way to try it. So you can do small projects and that's a great option for you too. Let me show you really quick the samples of what are in the tools video. So these are some of the samples of what you're gonna see in the tools video and lots of great ideas. That is an awesome video that will help you with any hand sewing. Okay, what I wanted to do is show you some of the samples and ideas for what you can do to hand quilt and some of the different designs you can come up with. One of the things, remember I recommended doing small projects, why don't you try some pot holders this year? When you make pot holders for gifts or whatever, they're not to be used really. I'm There's a lot of pot holder exchanges at guilds and things like that. And I hang them on the walls at Christmas time. So this would be a good option. It would give you practice to stitch in the ditch just around here, something simple to just um, make it uh, finished, you know, and quilted. So keep that in mind. Another option is to do, cro this is called cross hatching. Okay, so you do this both directions. And it's featured in my All For Me pattern, English paper piecing, EPP 136, just in case you're interested. This is available on my Etsy store and also on my website. And soon to be just Etsy, I think. I'm going to switch everything over to that. So anyway, so that's another option for you. And you can see that the stitches, 
they look good. You know, I took my time with this one. Some of them, they don't, they, I don't take my time. I just go through it. So this one here, another option. Let me see if there is. This one ended up being a little bit longer. I made a mistake and didn't create the bottom the same as the pattern. Still works great, but you're not going to be able to put it over an easel. So I did put a rod pocket in it. And I usually put two rod pockets in. Can you see that? Yes, two rod pockets in. So there's a, a space in the middle instead of having to cut it. But I was in a hurry that day. Really? <laughs> Always. This is another project that I did quite a few years ago. And I love it because it's really simple. But I did some basic, like basic echo quilting, which would be a quarter inch from all the seam, um, each of the seams in the background. Left the centers, the colored pieces empty. Did a little flower down here, here, and down here on the bottom. I don't know if you can see this bottom piece. Then in the corners, I did a teacup. You cannot see it except on the back. But that's okay. I know it's there. And so this was a great um, project, great to practice. I did this many years ago, and I enjoy it because it's nice and summery, springy. This one I brought to show you because I just want to make sure that you understand that I'm okay with doing both hand quilting and machine quilting. If I had to hand quilt all of these little stinkers in the background, I would never in a million years do it. I just wouldn't do it. So I went in and I machine stippled the background and then I did this pretty design that I put on each of the sides all the way down. And if you're interested, this is the English wedding ring. So if you're looking for a quick wedding quilt, it's a great option. It sure beats a double wedding ring, um, especially for somebody that you love, but they don't really, they're not going to necessarily appreciate or take the care that you would like them to of a double wedding ring and what that requires. So anyway, just wanted to see that you can do both. I do that quite often if I need to. This one is a English paper piece also in embroidery. And this pattern is not available anymore, which is why this book, and that's one reason I created a pattern. But I like just the simple cross hedging. It just creates a good background for your design. If you see my skirt hangers here, this is a great way to hang your smaller quilt. And if you do, put some batting in there to protect it from the little, the grooves on here. So I have a closet that I hang as many as I can. This one I wanted to show you because this one I bought at a small quilt auction. And I really like it. It's very simple. It has a cable in the side. This is all stitched in the ditch. And to me personally, that's way too much work to do, to just stitch in the ditch where no one can see it. So if, in my opinion, if I'm going to hand quilt, I want to see the quilting. Now, if you're brand new and you're like, no, I don't want anybody to see my quilting, then this is what you're going to do. Um, so nobody can see that. But it's uh, it's cute. They just did it everywhere around it. I liked it because it's sailboats. It's a good summer quilt. This particular quilt was made by a really amazing quilter. And uh, she did take the time to go in here. And I bought this at a small quilt auction just because Trudy Faye did it. She was or is still probably an award-winning uh, rifle woman. She is like number one in the country at the time she was um, competing. So this, she created a design that goes through and brings these all together. So it's kind of cool. It's like, I did not ever notice that until yesterday. Um, yeah, yesterday, day before yesterday. So that's pretty cool. So I had to have it because it's a piece of Trudy. She moved away from Phoenix. So I haven't seen her since, haven't heard from her. This particular one, um, I would do two different ways. Sometimes I do cross hatching in the background to fill it all in. In this one, I did echo quilting instead, and I did these flowers in the corners. So it's not densely quilted. And in the borders, I did a cable, kind of a cable type design. So keep that in mind. There's lots of options that you can do. Just make sure that you figure out what you want to do and uh, keep it um, the same throughout. This particular quilt I also bought at a small quilt auction and it is stitched in the ditch also but I think it would need it. Don't you agree? With a stained glass design if it was quilted any other way it would distort from the stained glass. So this person did really well with just quilting stitching in the ditch between on each side of the oh the let I call it letting 
that's what it is, but it's, uh, I don't know what you call it when you're quilting it. So that's kind of cute. I like that. This particular quilt, I, this is part of my very first, I think, paper pieces, paper piecing quilt. And it was interesting. When I made this, I loved it. I did all the different pieces. When I got the blocks done, they were all done. And I was traveling at the time we were living in Phoenix and I was traveling with my husband and I was like, I don't have a project. Oh my gosh. So I grabbed all these little fabrics and cut them out. And I thought, I'm just going to start hand piecing them. You know, each one just as I go until I'm home. Before I knew it, I had all of these strips pieced. So I did completely hand piece this entire quilt, including the borders. And that to me requires hand quilting. When you do that much hand work in a quilt, finish it with hand quilting and keep it as a treasure. This particular quilt, maybe 10 years ago, nah, probably more, 15 years ago, I had it appraised and you will never believe it's not that big. Um, I had it appraised and it was appraised for $550. So keep that in mind. If you're making quilts, find an appraiser, like a certified quilt appraiser, and have them quilt it. You will not regret it. This is another sample that I did, and it is machine stitched. But this one, I just, I'm like, oh, this would have been really cute if it was hand quilted. So I stitched just every so often through the background, and that would be would have been great. I also stitched through here, but I could have done a lot with this with hand quilting. So keep it in mind. Don't be afraid. Um, I probably made this before I was hand quilting. So it would be, that would be, or I just needed to get it done. So another, another reason. So what I want to do is show you how to hand quilt using this thimble. This, when I make my quilts, no matter what I'm doing, I cut the binding so it's all ready to go. Cut the rod pocket so it's ready to go and sandwich it. You can see I have my pins in there. I sometimes get caught on them, but not very often. It's, it's usually not a problem at all. So what I want to do is show you how you start. You know, sometimes, oh, of course I lost my thread. I had these needles threaded. So this one, what you're going to do, and sometimes I use a needle threader, but my eyes are still pretty good. Okay, so have you ever, when you hand quilt, sometimes it'll pull the threads, like you snag the thread in the fabric and it will pull, and you know what a pulled thread looks like? Horrible. So I discovered if it's gonna pull the thread, then why not come in through the back? So I go about a half an inch, you know, maybe three eighths of an inch, half an inch. So I start out here, and then I come to the front and I see where I'm going to be. I'm going to start there. So I try to start on the inside. Okay. So I'm here where I'm starting, but underneath I'm way over here. And that gives you room in the batting to nest or to keep the, to hold the thread in there, um, the tail. And... I'm going to show you how to do a quilter's knot too. That's, I think, on that other video. But I'll show you on this one too. So you're going to bring it through and you got to pop that knot through the thread, through the fabric. And sometimes it likes to be a little booger and I have to run my thing. There we go. It pops through. I don't want to pull it too hard because then it'll pull completely through. So what you're going to do I'll do the knot for you in a minute. So what you're going to do, the quilter's knot, is you're going to go backwards. So you're going to go back and take a bite. And I'm pricking my finger as I do that. Wherever you come up, that's the length of your stitch. So you do that with every stitch. Whatever's sticking out right here, that's again the length of your stitch. So if you want a big stitch, then you're going to be out here. Okay. If you want a small stitch, that's your goal is the tiny stitches. Then you're going to, whoop. I popped it out. That happens too. Okay. So you go backwards and bring it forwards. And all you're going to do is rock it back and forth. So I'm now I'm using the thimble to push it down, prick my finger, and come back up. Go down. I've got my stitch length. Whatever it's at, that's what it's going to be. Go backwards prick my finger and bring it up. Go backwards. Ow! 
I pushed it, slipped. Okay, so I'm going back and forth. Go down, prick your finger, and come back up. That's why this is really helpful. If I, I'll hand quilt for a little while, maybe, you know, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, until my finger starts hurting. When it starts hurting, then I put this on, and you'll see it has little prick marks in there. So what it's doing is it's pricking that. You have to prick it, but you can load your needle, which I like, and then you just pinch it and push it and pull it through. Okay. If you do it too fast, and then I pull it back out to make sure that I'm not gathering it. Um, when you go down, you can feel it. You're not feeling it, but you know it hit the pad. Did you hear it? Okay. And I'll get a bunch of stitches on there. Of course it's going to snag on a pin. It doesn't usually do that for me. Not too often. Just undo it. Okay. And then wherever you start, that will be your stitch. But that way, by going backwards, you make sure you get a good stitch underneath. Keep in mind that when you do this, it takes a lot of practice. Just like machine stitching, quilting, just like riding a bike, just like learning your alphabet. And sometimes I got to back out the needle if it's too big. Okay. There we go. See, I'm already stuck. Hence why you got to keep. It's easier on your lap. That's why I love my cushion on my lap. Watch the video, the tools video, you'll see my cushion. Hard to do this in the air. Now, if you're doing some projects and it's like, I love my mother-in-law, but she has no clue. I've made her things that are never seen again. So I, I don't do a lot of extra work for her. Now, if it's my mom, she's very particular. So of course, I'm going to put a lot more effort into my project when I give her a gift. So depending, you have to think about who the project is for. That will determine how you quilt it. If you see on this one, I did not do cross hatching. This is called get it done quick. Um, I just did regular stitching and it looks like the sun rays coming out from the cross. So this is an easy, quick way to make one. And then I can sell it. I can give it as a gift and just bless somebody. And it didn't take me a ton of time. It took me time, but you see, I don't even have any embroidery on here. So anyway, so let me show you how you end it. When you get to the end... You wrap it three times. Now let's show you how to do the knot. That would help, wouldn't it? Now I had a ton of threads. <laughs> there we go. Here's one right here. So when you fill a needle, I'm going to steal my needle from the other project. When you fill a needle, you're going to take it and you are going to... Run it through there. Okay. Pretend it's coming off the spool. Where you cut it off the spool, that's the end that gets the knots, and that's the longer end. So what you're going to do, I'm so organized. Not today. I was up way too long last night. So what you're going to do is you have a circle. Pretend that you have a circle and you have this going one way and your other thread going the other way. You're going to wrap it three times. Now I have to switch fingers. I can't do it one handed. Some people do it one handed, but you have your three wrapped threads, hold it there and push it through. It has to complete the circle. 
If I do it any other way, it'll fall out. So just lightly hold it to where the thread can come through and that's where your knot will be. That is called a quilter's knot. If you want to rewind this 50 times, do. My students absolutely love it. So there's your knot. Now I can cut that tail off, but I'm okay with that tail. So when you get done and you are finishing your quilting and you're ready to um, bury it again, you're going to wrap it three times. You're going to go down where you came up or one stitch over. You're going to go between the fibers, you know, down into your batting. Now here on the end, I would knot. I would just knot it and cut it off, but I wanted to show you how to do it. So if I was knotting it off up here and burying it, so I put it, wrap it, tighten up the knot right to the fabric, pull it through, and then pop it through. And just like you did before, you're going to have to wiggle it. You're going to have to play with it sometimes because I don't want it to gather. If I pop it too far through, did I get it? I think I got it. Maybe not. There we go. You can hear it pop through. I don't want this all gathered. Sometimes that happens and I'm like, crap. Then you have to go back and play with it and get it loosened up. So if you're going to the outside edge, you don't have to do all that. You can just um, tie a knot, cut it off because you're going to um, put binding on it. So again, one more time. Whoop. You're going to wrap it three times. One, two, three. Hold it where you want the knot. I got a little bitty tail this time. Make sure it's coming all the way through and you're pushing it through. And there is your knot. Okay. And then I'm going to show you how to do it again. Um, let me see where am I at. So I start over here. And then I come up over here. So I'm about half an inch at least. I can pop it through, hopefully. And I start out with my threads. Ideally, you should be like 18 to 20 inches. I start out with mine sometimes 24. Some of these are 30 inches long. I don't go any longer than that. And a lot depends on your thread. If you start breaking thread, throw it away. And if you're doing a batting that's um, really like dr um, dragging the thread, if it's, it's having a hard time going through, then you need to throw that thread out. Not throw it out, but cut shorter pieces. And if it's really bad, just throw it out. Just don't even use it. Because if it's breaking on you all the time, it's not going to hold the quilt together. Now, if you're making a baby quilt for somebody and you're like, oh, I really want to hand quilt my first grandchild's baby quilt. Forget it. Uh, I've talked to way too many moms, grandmas that have done that, and they were shocked to find the quilt, you know, drug outside. It went through the wash every week. It did not hold up. They get frustrated. So just machine quilt it. Oops, see how my stitch length is bigger than I want? So I can go back, pull it back out, shorten it up, and go back in and redo my stitch okay this is great to do in the car you know if it's a sunny day if um if the road's not too rocky and love to do it when I'm visiting with friends you know like a sewing circle or just getting together when I go visiting family you know I can sit there and hand sew and I don't get bored and I'm not um I find that I don't talk as much because I'm a talker as so those of you that know me and so it helps me to, you know, just relax, just relax and listen. Oh, it scooted on me again. So you more rock it instead of pushing it. You're only pushing it. And you notice I don't hoop my quilts. I just have never been able to do that. If you're a hooper, great. That's awesome. Hoop it, frame it, whatever works for you. But you notice I have, I pretty much turn the quilt to the direction that I need it. Um, I will let you know another secret. Before you hand quilt a bunch of curves into a quilt, 
check it on a sample and see if you can do it and if you like it. I have discovered with practice that sometimes like those teacups, those are a pain in the butt. It's like I'm not doing a whole quilt of those. So you might do one or two of something and not the rest. And to let you know, on my very first quilt, I was going to hand quilt. It had warm and natural in it. I was all excited. It was maybe 50 or 60 inches square. And I was all excited. I was going to hand quilt. I hand quilted maybe 10 inches. And it was warm and natural. I could not hand quilt the rest. So I feel like it's perfectly fine to cut that thread. You know, either take it out. Or in my case, I wanted to keep it. Because it's my very first stitches. And... So I kept it in the quilt and then I finished it with machine quilting and it just, it's fine. I mean, it, it, who cares? I like it. It works for me. And that's the only one you have to impress is yourself. So anyway, so I hope this helps you get this. It's on my website. You can find it, the link for that to house of quilting. And I don't get any money for this at all. This is just to help Jean sell a lot of thimbles and she has a patent on there you can see so you're not going to find it anywhere else but I don't get the hand cramps because you're just going to rock it back and forth I'm not grabbing it it's not tight it's just holding it kind of like knitting or crocheting you just hold the needle and you uh knit and crochet same with this you're just going to hold the I don't even know what to call it a hand quilting stick they call it a thimble the quilting thimble but it's um, it's more like a stick and you just rock it. So anyway, I hope I got everything. Oh my gosh, here's my sample of what I was teaching the other day. And you can see it better. It's just, you know, I just practiced. We were just practicing and drawing on the lines. So finding a piece of, of, of fabric that you can do that with is very helpful. And this one will show you the backing. You can see the stitching on the backing. Again, this is the simple cross with the binding on it. Um, I'm working on a binding video too. I also need to do that one. And this one was in a hurry. I can see really big stitches, little stitches. They're all over the place. And I was probably traveling. So it's like, it is what it is. Um, most 99% of the people are never going to know. So anyway, have a great day. And uh, let me find my website for you. hope you can see that jody's gems quilting.com and it's the same for my etsy store and it's the same for my youtube channel jody's gems quilting have a great day bye